So today we're going to talk about the coordinate grid. And um, a coordinate grid is nothing more than two number lines that have been put together. And then that um, structure of having the two number lines intersecting with one another allows us to place points on a graph. And so uh, we did a lot of work when we were doing ratios in the first quadrant. And the first quadrant is the one that you did in elementary school. So um, if you have a piece of graph paper, you can go ahead and draw on this now. If you don't, then just draw this in your notebook. But as it says here, coordinate grid are just two number lines put together. So I have a, my first number line that goes from negative 10 to positive 10, and that's my horizontal number line. And then I have a second number line here um, that also goes from 1 to 10. And I can take the first number line and put it on top of the second number line. And so when I do that and I set it up, I've now created a coordinate grid. So it's nothing more than the two number lines on top of one another. And if you notice, I have 0 to positive 10 going up and 0 to positive 10 going out to the right and 0 to negative 10 going off to the left and 0 to negative 10 going down. So it's just my two number lines put together. So on your paper, I need for you to um, draw something that looks like this, and we'll talk about what's going on with this. So when you have a coordinate grid, you are going to be graphing points, and the points are written in ordered pairs. So you'll remember when we were doing our t-charts, we had our t-chart, and we had our x column and our y column. So if I had 3, 4, I plotted the ordered pair 3, 4. And this is the same thing. So my x is my horizontal axis. So please write x right there. And x means horizontal. My vertical axis is my y. And so the way I remember it is x goes across. Like if you were going to cross something out, you would make an x. And the y goes up and down. So the tail of the y um, hangs down. So that's the vertical. So right, vertical right here. Okay, so you have an ordered pair, and the ordered pair is x, y. Your x tells you to go left or right, and your y tells you to go up or down. So first you do your x, and then you do your y. So I've got some ordered pairs I'm going to be putting on my coordinate grid. But before we begin, we need to talk about this most special point right here, which is the intersection of my x and my y. And the address of that point, of course, is 0, 0, and that's my origin. So when we were talking about proportionality and when things were proportional, the line had to be straight and it had to pass to the origin. And we mostly were working in this just first quadrant, and the first quadrant is right here, where everything was positive, positive. But now we're going to be talking about all four quadrants. So let's talk about the four quadrants before we go any further. So draw a little baby coordinate grid on your um, paper like this, and we'll talk about the quadrants. So the quadrants, the way that I remember the order of them is that the quadrants, there are four of them because the root word, um, the prefix quad means four, and I draw a C in the center, and the C could stand for coordinate grid. It could also stand for Cartesian plane. And this type of structure was developed by a French mathematician named Rene Descartes, so they sometimes call it a Cartesian plane. But when I started my C, I started here in quadrant one. And quadrants are always listed with Roman numerals. If I follow my letter C, I now am in quadrant two. Continuing, I wind up in quadrant three. And then finally, I end up in quadrant four. So these are the four quadrants. All right, so let's go back to where we were drawing on our graph paper. And we're going to plot some points. So the first point I'd like to plot is going to be called point A. And point A's address is going to be four, two. So that means I'm going to start at the origin, and I'm going to count to the right four. One, two, three, four, and then go up to one, two. And I'm going to put my point there and I'm going to label it A. Point A is in quadrant one. And I know that it's in quadrant one because my coordinates are positive, positive. 
I went to the right, which is a move of positive, and I went up, which is a move of positive. So point A is at 4, 2. It is in quadrant 1, and the coordinates for all points in quadrant 1 are going to be positive, positive. Okay? The second point I'd like for you to graph is point B. And point B, we're going to do at negative 5, 3. So I start once again at the origin, and I count to the left 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I go up 3. 1, 2, 3. And I put my point there, and that's point B. Point B is in quadrant 2. Point B, the um, coordinates, the signs on those coordinates are negative, positive. So every point that is in quadrant 2 will have a negative x and a positive y because it goes to the left and then up. All right, so point C we're going to graph, and point C is at negative 2, negative 4. So I'm going to start at my origin, go to the left 2, and then down 4 and put a point C. Point C is in quadrant 3. All points in quadrant 3 have a negative x and a negative y. The final point we're going to graph in a quadrant is point D. And point D we're going to put at 3, negative 2. So I'm going to go to the right 3 and down 2. There's my point D. And it is in quadrant 4. And points in quadrant 4 are positive, negative. Now we're going to plot point E and point F. So point E, we are going to plot at 0, 6. So I'm going to start at my origin. 0 as my x means I'm not going to go left or right. I'm going to go straight up. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So here's point E. Point E is not in a quadrant. Point E is on the y-axis. So we say that point E is what we call a y-intercept. Points on the number lines or the axes are called intercepts. Remember that an axis is an invisible line. My horizontal axis is my x-axis. My vertical axis is my y-axis. Point E is on my y-axis, so it is called a y-intercept. It is not on a, in a quadrant. The final point is going to be point F. And point F, I'm going to plot at 3, 0. So I'm going to start at my origin. I'm going to go 3 to the right, and I'm not going to go up or down. And there's point F. And point F, because it is not in a quadrant, it is on one of the axes, is on the x-axis, so it is an x-intercept. Okay? All right. The next thing I'd like for you to do is I'm going to give you some points, and you're going to graph them on your um, paper here in a sec. So... So the next thing I'd like for you to do, please, is I would like for you, please, to plot these points, G, H, I, J, K, and L, on your um, paper and add those in. Once you've plotted those points, I need you to write down the four quadrants that each of these points are in. So label the quadrants. Remember you, what letter of the alphabet you have to draw as you're labeling your quadrants. And then the final thing I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you, please, to identify your, um, your two intercepts. So I've written down two different intercepts on here. All right, so uh, good luck with that, and uh, the answers will follow. Okay, here are where you should have plotted your points. And these are the quadrants in which those points lie. And 
your two intercepts were negative 3, 0, which was your x-intercept, and 0, negative 3, which was your y-intercept. So the next thing I need for you to do is I need for you, please, to log on to IXL, and you are going to be doing IXL skills in the 6x group, 6x1 through 3. Thank you very much.